Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube video. I am the developer of Kamikaze Q-tips. These Q-tips come in a variety of four different hardnesses. All the way on the left we have the Super Soft. Next to that we have the Soft. Next to that we have the Medium. And all the way on the right hand side we have the Hard. If you haven't heard about us before and would like to find out more information about our Q-tips, you could visit us at kamikazeqtips.com. Well, what I like to do is I like to share a little bit of information about our tips to you. Uh, first of all, they are a black nine layer tip. They are constructed from 100% Japanese pig skin. Uh, they hold the chalk really well. Uh, the English you could apply to the cue ball is just incredible. The hit, the fill, is just phenomenal. Uh, I think what you would like even better about these tips is they're uh, about 50 to 75 percent off compared to other tips that are just you know way overpriced because of brand name popularity. There's no need to spend 17, 20, 23 dollars or even more for a Q-tip. That is just crazy. So uh, check us out today. I think you'll be really satisfied with our tips, the quality, and especially the price. All right, what we're gonna do here shortly is I'm gonna demonstrate how to install. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna go to get started. First thing I like to do is uh, I gotta square off this tip. Uh, so I need to cut it off and then uh, actually square off the ferrules so uh, it could take the tip the new tip very well. There's one pass over. There's another. There's another. I just like to take up, take off a little bit at a time. No need to rush during this process. Uh, this OV shaft actually has a black carbon fiber. So I gotta be careful not to cut into it. Very thin fiber. I don't know if you can see it or not, but black. Alright, I think that's a nice clean square cut. No need to take off anymore. Alright guys, what I like to do is, uh, well first of all, uh, here's the Kamikaze Super Soft I'm installing. I like to get a little 220, uh, go ahead and sand down the back of it. Uh, make sure to rough it up real good. That way there's, there's no indication of this glue sign that's there. All right, so you want to sand it off. That way there's no indication, uh, no glue, no nothing. Uh, one of the tricks I like to do is I like to score the back of these tips. Um, it just seems to, to uh, hold the glue really well and then to stick really well to the ferrule. So I'm going to take this blade right here. I'm going to score it. 
two, three. Well, I have about uh, four lines going across one way, and then what I want to do is go ahead and score the opposite way also. So that way it shows like you have like uh, little squares. All right, for this next part, uh, one of the little tricks I like to do, uh, I don't know if it's so much a trick, but I, I've seen other Q repair guys do this. They like to put tape around the edge of the ferrule like this as neatly and as close to the end as possible. Uh, the reason for this is because when you apply uh, glue to the Q-tip, and if it spreads slightly to the ferrule, uh, what happens is uh, when you try and uh, smooth these out with a little bit of sandpaper, uh, I think with the heat it creates like a bluish green color on your ferrule, and this doesn't look good at all. Uh, so, you know, over the last many years that I've been doing this, I've been using tape over the edge of uh, the shaft like this just to protect the ferrule from getting that uh, bluish green color when you have to do uh, slight sanding to blend in the, the Q-tip with uh, the ferrule. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys use Loctite, but this is my glue of choice. I've been using it for several years and I won't use anything else. This stuff is great. Okay, I don't know if you could see, uh, I applied uh, some of the Loctite gel to the tip, uh, smear it off really good. What I want to do is, uh, you could use a tip centering tool, uh, I mean, or you could just uh, center this by eye as best as, as possible. That's what I like to do. And make sure that glue uh, smudges real nicely. All right, that looks pretty good. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, lock that tip in, let it set probably for about a minute, two minutes, and then we'll get ready to trim it down so that it's even with the ferrule. All right, that, locks, that looks like it's locked in pretty good. We're going to let it dry in that position, um, probably about uh, one to two minutes, like I was saying. Uh, you could go ahead and wipe off the glue at this point, or you could wipe it off later after you take off the tape. It doesn't matter. Um, you could just take a little paper cloth, and just wipe it off gradually like this. And at this point, uh, if you want, uh, you can remove the tape now, or you can remove the tape uh, a little bit later. I'll go ahead and remove it now. All right, guys, as you can see, it uh, looks like that uh, glue dried pretty nice. Uh, I looked it all around. Uh, it looks like it spread real nice. It, it's solid. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim this t uh, this tip now so that it's even with the ferrule. Um, some people like to use a lathe to do that. Um, I'm set up to do that. Uh, I've just been using a blade for uh, many years. Um, could be uh, dangerous if you if you don't know what you're doing, uh, but uh, it's it's my method of choice and. Uh, uh, that's what I prefer to use, so I'm going to go ahead and start trimming that uh, tip down now.
Okay, looks like it's getting there, but it's still not totally flush of the ferrule, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple more passes. Actually, that looks pretty nice. Uh, we're real close to where we need to be. Probably one more uh, small pass. All right, I think that looks really good. Uh, what I'm gonna do, go ahead and do next, uh, I'm probably gonna take a little uh, 400, uh, just sand it lightly, just blend it in uh, the, the Q-tip with the ferrule so it's uh, nice and flush. And I won't, uh, I won't apply a lot of pressure to it, but just, just to uh, even it out nice and flush and make everything all uniform. All right, guys, so um, I uh, sanded that lightly with some 400. Uh, looks uh, nice and flush with the ferrule. Uh, my next step is what I like to do after the 400. I like to use a little 1,000. I can see the Q-tip already starting to get that really nice shine. And what this thousand does is just uh, just blends it in a little bit better than the 400. Uh, almost leaves like a almost like a, a finish ready enough to call it quits. But I don't stop there. What I like to do is I even take it one more step. I like to finish it off with a 2000. And that will really give um, the ferrule and that tip, that mirror finish that looks really nice, really professional. Uh, makes, you know, your tip and ferrule look brand new by the time it's done and polished and everything. You'll see the final results after I'm done and you'll see how well it uh, shines up and polishes up. And I think the reason is just because of this uh, process I use and just the way uh, it gets polished. Uh, you can already see that black right here coming out real nice. So I'm going to go ahead and hit just the tip itself. And a lot of people think, oh, well, that's, you're sanding. And this isn't really sanding at this point. When you're using this fine of a grit, a 2000 grit, yeah, I'm really nothing. I'm not really even sanding anything. I'm just really concentrating on the polish and, and just, to, just to shine it up and just to give it a real nice finish. So at this point, I'm just working on the finish. Not sanding down the ferrule and just trying to polish this tip up real nice uh, and kind of burnish it so it just stays in place. It's looking great already and it's not even polished with wax yet.
All right, I went ahead and stopped the lathe. Uh, that way you can see uh, what the tip looks like, um, you know, after it's finished off with the 2000. Let me just straighten out this camera. Uh, hopefully uh, you can get a little bit nicer look right there. Yeah, that's already shining really nice. And that's uh, one of the little tricks I use, uh, not only installing my kamikaze Q-tips, but uh, any, any type of tip that I install. And we're going to go ahead and start that shaping process. So check this out. Uh, what you want to do is, I don't know if you can see the point there. You want to center it in the middle of the tip as best as possible. I go ahead and lock this uh, carriage down here, lock it in place. And I just gradually move this up, cut slowly, no need to rush. So you see how nice that is? That took that off pretty easy. Uh, once I cut my first pass, um, I like to scoot this in just a nudge, get it a little bit closer to the tip as possible again without getting into the tip, and then go for my second cut. Okay, same thing again. Uh, go in a little bit closer to the center of the tip. You're going to go for another cut. All right, same process. All right, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it looks pretty decent already. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take off just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna shape it uh, with a Willard Shaper uh, tool after that, just to get that ni uh, perfect nickel radius that my customer wanted. So I'm just gonna cut off a little bit more, and then uh, we'll shape it after. This was handy, so I'll just go ahead and use this one. Yeah, that's looking very nice already. Looks like uh, about a perfect nickel radius. I'll zoom in a little bit. You guys check that out. Let me get this out of the way. Looks very nice. Uh, so one of the other things I do after I use a tip tool like this, uh, another little secret is, well, I don't know if it's a little secret, but um, I like to hit the edge of the tip, probably with a little 220. Um, I don't know, I just think it helps uh, for uh, less miscues. Uh, it helps for grabbing the ball real nice. It's uh, And it just, um, I don't know, I think it helps overall. So this is what I do. After I use the tip tool, I'll, I'll hit the sides uh, with a little 220.
think that looks nice, almost perfect. Just hit a little bit more on the edges of the edge. Uh, a lot of Q repair guys don't do this. Uh, that's something I do. Like I said again, um, uh, a lot of the players that I install tips for, they prefer I do this. Um, they say it helps them uh, with less miscues. And, and this is the way I shape my tips too. I just like to hit the edges like that. And um, hopefully you will too. All right, so that looks pretty decent. Um, one of the last steps I like to do, uh, and a lot of Q people, Q or Q repair people, don't do this, but this is one of the little extra things I do. I polish up the ferrule and the tip. It just uh, makes it pop. It gives it that nice gloss. Um, and then, as you saw earlier, when I use that uh, 2000 grit. Um, then I polish after. Um, that's what just makes everything come together. Uh, and I just use a little bit of wax uh, to polish the tip and ferrule. So I got a little paper towel, put a little bit of wax on it, and uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, polishing that tip and ferrule. As you can see, I like to work it in a little bit, uh, create a little bit of heat for that wax. So that way it just polishes real nice. That way when I take off this wax, it gives that tip and ferrule that really nice uh, shiny mirror look. I'm gonna go ahead and take off that wax now. I don't know how well you can see it, but I'll zoom in on this a little bit better. I'll go ahead and stop the lathe so you can check it out. All right, guys, uh, here's a nice close up of the tip. Uh, as you can see, it has that nice uh, mirror finish, like I was telling you about. Um, if you think they look good, well, uh, give us a try. They even play much better. Uh, once again, you could visit us at kamikazeqtips.com. Uh, if you try one of our tips, um, well, I think you'll have a new favorite tip. Thanks for watching this video and hope to hear from you soon. All right, bye-bye.